Welcome to the beginner introductory gentle class for the first week of the Find Your Freedom Method. We're going to open with a mantra. We will pretty much always open with a mantra. If you're, uh, if you're needing some background onto why we're using mantra and chanting, go back to the introduction video that I shared previously in week one in this week. So go ahead and listen. If you know the practice, if you know the mantra, if you've studied Dharma yoga with me, you'll know the mantra that I, that I open the practice with. I might open with other mantras, but I'll pretty much always use the one from Dharma yoga. This mantra was passed down um, from my teacher, Sri Dharma Mitra, from his, uh, from his guru and his guru and so on and so forth. And so it's got a bit of mysticism around it. Um, we don't translate it directly. It's mostly that it provides deep energetic benefits and invokes uh, a sense of reverence. Okay, so follow along. Um, it's okay, you'll learn it over time. Just, just listen to how I uh, pronounce the mantra and we'll begin. Oh. Pavitra ha pavitra wa sarwa vashtanga topi wa yaha smarit pondrikaksham sabahya bientra ha suchi. We'll do it again. Om mapavitra ha pavitra wa sarwa vashtanga topi wa. Yaha smarit pondrikaksham sabahiya vientraha suchi. Last time. Om mapavitraha pavitra wa sarva vashtanga topi wa. Yaha smarit pondrikaksham sabahiya vientraha suchi. Set an intention for your practice. A sankalpa, something you'd like to offer the practice to. Maybe it's a, a power greater than you, another person that needs healing. The practice is an offering to that intention. We'll return to this intention over and over again throughout the practice. We'll continue to bring the mind back. Okay, so starting lying on the ground, face down, hands overlapping, forehead to the tops of the hands, and settling in. Noticing the weight of the body. on the floor. Notice the various points of contact between the body and the floor and the mat, starting at the feet, tops of the feet, making contact with the floor, with the earth. Notice what it's like to be in your feet, to Send your awareness to your feet. And then the knees, notice the knees making contact with the floor, with the earth. What does that feel like? Can you feel the knees? Can you feel the legs? What is your relationship there? Please make a note if there's not a lot of sensation in the lower half of the body. Just be aware. We'll want to work towards deeper embodiment if that's the case.
And then the thighs, noticing the thighs making contact, letting them become heavier. And the pelvis, the front of the pelvis, making contact with the floor. Allow the pelvis to start to settle, to arrive. And then the low belly, breathing in through the nose, down to the, into the low belly, allowing the low belly to expand first. And then the rib cage expands and then the chest. And as you exhale, the low belly lifts up back towards the spine. Rib cage comes back in. The heart softens upward toward the spine. Take a few deep breaths here, in and out of the nose, starting ujjayi, pranayam, which is our basic breath in the practice of yoga. So it sounds like you're wake, making waves at the back of the throat. You can imagine trying to fog a mirror by breathing out of the mouth, but you're doing it with the mouth closed. So it starts to sound like the waves of the ocean, fitting, considering <laughs> I'm in Hawaii, I can feel, I can hear the waves outside. You might be able to hear them too. So deepening the breath. Even if you just allow yourself to soften 1%, that's enough. Deep breath in, down to the belly. Belly. Exhales first. Sometimes it's difficult to be in the body. We feel restless, we feel anxious, we feel emotions we don't want to feel or we leave, we kind of check out, zone out. So we're gonna link breath with movement to help you stay connected to your experience and only go into certain postures, little bits at a time. Notice the softening settling down it's like a gentle hug of gravity just settling the bones settling the cells of the body and then feel the neck soften the face soften if you need to turn the head to one side or the other for an adjustment go ahead And then just start to wiggle back and forth, wiggle the hips back and forth. Just starting to bring some movement, gentle movement into the practice, into the body. Starting to wake the body up. When we are in our window of tolerance, our when our nervous system is responding to life in a healthy, appropriate way, we are both relaxed and alert at the same time. Some of us might learn the body doesn't really know, like we start to relax and then they just fall asleep. <laughs> right? That's not the, really the goal, okay? The goal is to walk through your life with this relaxed, aware, awakeness, being in your body. So just notice, right? Starting to wiggle the body, starting to notice how that shifts the legs, how that comes into the torso and the upper body. <sighs> Staying with the breath. 
and then starting to come up. So bringing the forearms into Sphinx pose. Sphinx, like in Egypt, we want the elbows directly underneath the shoulders. This prepares us for cobra and other advanced, more, more advanced back bends. And just start to press the tops of the feet, finding stillness again, tops of the feet into the floor, engaging the quads so the knees might even lift off the mat. And then rolling the shoulders down and back, widening the collarbones, pressing all 10 fingers into the mat, and imagining pulling the front of the mat back toward your hips. Look forward, deep breath down into the belly. Be here for a few breaths. You might, you might have some yawning come through. This is the nervous system releasing energy, releasing stress. most of the time, typically. <laughs> Good, and then come back down, switch the sides of the face. Finding stillness again. And let's come back up, another Sphinx pose. Again, pressing the tops of the feet into the floor, engage the quads, lifting the knees potentially off the floor, press the hips, the pelvis into the earth as you pull the hands back towards the elbows, widening the collarbones, looking straight ahead, softening the gaze. Nice deep breaths here. Good, and then come back down, bringing the hands right underneath the shoulders, going to lift up, lift the legs, lift the hands. Gentle Shalavasana. My teacher, one of my teachers likes to call this skydiving pose. <laughs> Deep breaths down into the belly. Breathing deeply into postures like this where there's some pressure on the stomach, on the, on the gut, helps to regulate digestion. Rolling the inner thighs up towards the ceiling and spreading the toes. And release, other side of the face. Just relax. Notice what it feels like to settle again, to, to, to release the movement from the body. Good, back up. Another little lift, pull the heart forward, shoulders down and back, releasing the shoulder blades down the spine. Hmm. Good, pressing the hands down on the floor, legs release, bring the hips up and back, make your way into child's pose. So we bring the hips to the heels, <sighs> fingers, Reach out towards the front of the mat. And then soften the forearms to the earth. Notice the sensation in the lower half of the body. Another little moment here. This is deeply grounding and stabilizing. And then coming to all fours. Okay, coming to all fours. So the wrists underneath the shoulders, knees directly underneath the hips, little cat cow here. So inhaling, release the heart towards the earth, lift the chin, look up. Exhale, round the spine, belly button goes towards the spine, tuck the chin in towards the chest. Feel the stretch happening between the shoulder blades. Inhale, looking up. Gaze goes up towards the sky. Exhale, round. Inhale, looking up. Exhale, round. 
Inhale, looking up and coming to neutral. And just give it a little wiggle, <laughs> a little shake. And then let's lift the left arm and the right leg, opposite arm and leg, left arm, right leg, lift up, flex the toes towards the floor. Keep the collarbones wide as you lift and then exhale, elbow to knee curling. Inhale up, lift, extend. Exhale round, knee to elbow. Inhale, lift and release. Other side, right arm, left leg. Flex the toes, lift, feel the glute engage in the back. Nice, firm belly, send the, the navel towards the spine here, keeping the core strong. Exhale, round, elbow to knee. Tuck the chin in towards the chest. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. Beautiful. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. Inhale, lift. And down. Now back to all fours. Now, if you're new to yoga, pay attention here. This is downward facing dog. If you are not new to yoga, you're just wanting a gentler class, go ahead and head towards downward facing dog. Beginners, tuck the toes underneath, tuck the toes under, and then we're going to lift the knees off the floor, lift the hips up and back. Now notice, hopefully you can see, <laughs> notice from here, okay? I'm not rounded forward, I'm back. You can keep the knees bent, feet or hip width apart, toes point forwards, index finger points forwards, all 10 fingers spread wide. But start with the knees bent so you can start to send the spine back toward, toward, the, uh, toward your thighs. So you can even imagine the belly button touching the thighs with the knees bent. Looking towards the navel. Over time, the legs start to straighten. The heels go towards the floor. Hopefully you can see it. <laughs> Belly button goes in. Okay. Good. And then coming to plank. So shoulders right over the wrists. Breathe here. We'll spend about three breaths here. Roll the inner thighs up towards the ceiling. Engage the glutes. Nice deep belly breath. Ujjayi breath. Sounds like the ocean. Hmm. And then knees to the floor. Hips back to the heels. This is a modified child's pose. And then coming forward, cobra. So notice how we come forward, I bring the chest through. Very important in cobra, especially if you're just starting out. Hands right under the shoulders. The hip bones, the pelvis never leaves the floor in cobra. Keep the spine, or I'm sorry, to keep the pelvis in contact with the floor. So some of us might start out way lower, right? I've been practicing for a while, so I can keep the hips on the floor and lift up pretty high, right? Some people try to lift this high, but then they start to lift the hips off the floor. It's not appropriate. Come back down, stay here. Work on pulling the heart forward. It's much harder. You're gonna feel it in the backs of the arms and the triceps, okay? So this is a correct Cobra pose. All right, and then again, tucking the toes up and back, downward facing dog. Mm. Nice deep breaths. Belly button in towards the spine. Good. And then back to all fours. Back to hands and knees. And left, le left arm, right leg, lift up again. Exhale, round, elbow to knee. Inhale, lift. Flex the toes, flex the foot. And elbow to knee. Inhale, lift. 
and release. Other side, right arm, left leg, flex the ankle and the toes, widen the collarbones, exhale round, elbow to knee, inhale lift, exhale round, inhale lift, and revert and release. Again, downward facing dog, belly button in toward the spine, come forward to plank, shoulders over the wrists, strong through the legs, send the heels back towards the wall behind you, engage the legs, glutes are on, quads are on, knees to the floor, hips back to the heels. <sighs> And come forward, cobra pose. So again, most beginners will be somewhere around here, doing it correctly, safely. And exhale, up and back, downward facing dog. Good. Okay, from here. Step the left foot forward all the way in between the hands. If it doesn't quite make it, walk it forward, no problem, but be sure that the front foot gets in between the hands. Back heel rotates down, coming up for warrior two. Opening the arms out. Nice deep bend in the front knee, about 90 degrees. Now, if you're new to the practice, you might come into this 10%. It might look like more like this. Okay, 100% might be too much, right? This is, for me, I'm feeling a little tight today, so this is like, ooh, this feels like, yeah, more toward my edge. Rolling the shoulders down away from the ears. And then forearm, a couple of options here. Forearm to the thigh, right arm comes up and over. This is side angle pose or parjvakanasana. If this is too much, you can bring the back knee down. So I'll start here and then you can kind of pivot that back leg around, give you some extra support. Reach, roll the rib cage open, and then start to look toward the top fingertips. Hmm. Nice deep ujjayi breath. Good, and release. Hands frame the foot, step back, plank pose. Shoulders right over the wrists. And knees to the floor, hips to the heels. Take a rest. And then coming forward, again, cobra pose. Maybe go toward 30%, 30, 40% here. Maybe what's half of your effort. Feel the sensations in the body, feel the pelvis, the lower body in contact with the floor. What does it feel like to breathe in a deeper way? Maybe it's the first time you're breathing more deeply all day. Now let's, let's just start to move, looking around the space, moving the head, neck, Ah, eyes around, notice what that's like. You're like, Jenna, I'm still in Cobra. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> yes, feel, there's fire happening in the triceps, right? A little burn, no problem. If it's too much, release, come out a little bit. <sighs> and then come back up, plant the hands down, shoulder width apart, downward facing dog. And then from here, I'm going to come into to, uh, side plank, Vashisthasana, starting on the right side. So if we're coming from plank, you can watch me here, starting from plank. I'm going to bring the right hand right underneath my face, roll onto the outside edges of the feet, stack the feet. Okay, this is if you've been practicing a little longer. If you're newer to the practice, bring the bottom knee down, right knee 
top leg is straight, looking up towards the sky. Go ahead, release, other side. Again, if you are more experienced with the practice, this doesn't feel too taxing. Stacking the feet, both legs straight. If you're wanting a gentler practice, bring the bottom knee down, looking up. Arms should be in one line. All the fingers together, okay? We don't spread the fingers, we keep the fingers together to keep all the energy channeled through one place. Good, and release down. And downward facing dog. This time, right leg all the way through in between the hands. Back heel comes down at a 45 degree angle. Now look, we want the heel to be in line roughly with the arch of the back foot and one of your leg lengths long, okay? Sometimes I see people who are new start out like this, okay? We want, that's too short, we want your full leg length long between the feet. Front foot is completely straight. Back foot, it's a 45 degree angle, roughly. And let's just play here with what feels like different percentages of effort. Might be different from one day to the next. Hmm. Maybe go to 30, 40% of your effort here. And then side angle pose. Again, forearm to the thigh, left arm up and over, rotate the head, looking up towards the, eventually the top hand. Again, for a gentler practice, bring the back knee down. Notice the stretch through the left hip all the way up into the armpit, back of the arm, widen the chest, the collarbones. Maybe send the corners of the mouth up towards the ears, right? Little smile. Good, and then hands down, frame the foot, step back, plank pose. Knees to the floor, hips to the heels. Rolling forward, cobra pose, bhujangasana. Mm. Little movement here. Sometimes I might invite you to move. Sometimes I might invite you to be still. They do different things in the body. And then release up and back, downward facing dog. Good, bending the knees again, thighs in contact with the belly. We want to straighten the spine before we straighten the legs. Don't worry about the heels touching the earth. You will get there. No rush. Good, and then come back. Coming to seated on the heels. Okay. Bringing the hands back to heart center. Remember your intention, your sankalpa. Soften the eyes, closing the eyes. Bring all your attention to the space between the eyebrows. Good. Okay, from here, shoulder stand. Again, if you're, if, you're, if you're more experienced with the practice, go ahead towards shoulder stand, but take a gentle variation. I'll show you. Beginners, we want to come, if you have blocks, blocks are really useful. Some props, you might start to acquire some yoga props, okay? To start though, we just want to lift. If you are really, if you are, if you, this is, you can start here, okay? You can just lift the legs. This is wonderful for your lymphatic system. You can prop the legs up against the wall. 
this is this is great for your body. Every night you could do this, legs against the wall, and your body will thank you. Okay, next step from here is hips up. Just a slight bend in the back. We're not bringing the body straight yet. Closing the eyes, bring all the attention again to the space between the eyebrows. Offering the pose up to your intention. Good, deep breaths here. And then just slight bend in the knees. We're starting to head toward plow pose. Again, if you've been in the practice a little longer, maybe only do half of what you can in plow. Just a gentle approach. So the hips are up, knees are bent, feet are approaching the floor, no need to touch. Just bring the hands to the low back, okay? Nice softening, bring the attention now to the space around the throat, closing the eyes and imagine a bright blue light there in the throat. And then release the hands down toward the mat, slow, no slamming down, slow controlled, bringing the spine down vertebra by vertebra. Then the hips. And then feet onto the floor. Good. And then coming up to seated. Okay, so this is the Beginnings of fish pose, okay? So, legs are straight, fingertips in line with the hips, right about the hip level. And you might just start here, open the collarbones, look up, especially if the upper spine is very tight, okay? A lot of the men in my practice, in my yoga, not to generalize, but it's usually what I would see is very tight upper body. No problem, just start to open up, breathe, look up. Okay, if you can then, next, start to bring the forearms to the floor. Hands didn't move at all. Lift the spine, flex the toes in towards the shins, look up. And then if it feels okay on the neck, you can release the head back, but do not let the shoulders crunch forward like this, okay? Open wide. Again, the tension to the throat, bright blue light, closing the eyes, all the attention there. Wherever your mind goes, the prana and the blood will follow. Good, and then release down to the floor. Little wiggle side to side of the legs, the hips. And then knees up into the, uh, knees bent, feet to the floor. And see, you know, be sure you can kind of touch, potentially touch the fingertips to the Achilles, the heels there. And we're gonna lift the hips into bridge. If you can, if you have a block, you can start on the lowest setting of the block. If you want a little restorative practice, then next medium, and then, um, uh, you know, that's that's about it. I don't, I wouldn't want you to go towards the highest setting in this class. And if you are not using a block, you might bring the hands to the low back. This is a little more towards the edge of the full pose, right? This is here, this here's the full pose. So maybe, you know, 50% of your effort. Deep breaths down into the belly. Eyes can be open or closed. If the eyes are open, keep them soft. Now press into the heels and almost like you're gonna release the glutes, engaging the quads. 
just notice it gives that it gives the sacrum and the low back a little bit of space working to roll the upper arms around and back. Good, and then release, bring the knees into the chest, rock side, your set, rock, rock side to side, giving yourself a big hug. Good, and then taking a hold of the outside edges of the feet. Heels go directly over the knees, okay? Some of you, this might be too much, that's okay. You might um, use a strap here or a towel. Towel's a little harder. But if you know this is challenging for you, if this is cha pose is challenging for you, you definitely need a strap. And I'll link some below. Rocking side to side, this is happy baby. <laughs> Hopefully you feel like a happy baby here. Maybe you don't yet. <laughs> no problem. That's the point. Always funny to me when people say they're not flexible enough for yoga. It's like a meme I saw a long time ago. It was like saying you're not flexible enough for yoga is like saying too, you're too dirty for a bath. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Right? That's why we do the practice. That's why we take a bath. <laughs> Good. Ah, good. Okay, another little wiggle. And then rocking forwards and back, massaging the spine. One of my teachers would always say, that his teacher would always say, you're only as young as your spine. So if the spine is healthy and strong, open, flexible, then we feel young. If the spine is tight, and constricted and injured and all sorts of things and we feel old okay and that will directly affect our body all my chiropractors know what's up right <laughs> okay so coming all the way to seated legs out long that's getting a little bunched up okay Paschimottanasana, forward fold. Okay, now I don't want you to go toward straightening the legs and then reaching forward and rounding the back, right? It's just like downward facing dog. We bend the knees, belly stays in contact with the thighs, lift the arms up, reach forward out for the outsides of the feet and inch forward only as far as the belly will stay in contact with the thighs. So right here, I'm gonna stay right here this feels good for me. Collarbones are wide. This will, you'll make progress much faster in the forward folds if you keep the knees bent and work on opening the spine first, okay? This is why people will spend years with the legs bent, the back is rounded, and they don't make any progress. It's not really doing anything. Widen, again, the collarbones, and now closing the eyes. Bring all the attention to the base of the spine. Imagining a red light there, base of the spine. Deep belly breaths. You're exactly where you need to be, wherever you are in this moment. Every moment is a teacher. And Baba Ramdas, one of the great teachers of the 20th century, said everything and everyone is a teacher if you know how to listen. Good. And then coming up to seated, keep the left leg long. Right leg comes over the left. Keep it beyond the knee for now. Right hand goes back behind you. Lift the left arm up, reach, and then hold on to the outside of that knee. Looking over the back shoulder, soften the shoulders towards the earth. Chin is in line with the floor. Every inhale, you lift the spine a little taller. With every exhale, you twist a little deeper, send the belly button in towards the spine. Good, and release. 
right leg goes long, left leg over, the right foot is beyond the knee, left arm back, right arm goes up and twist. Relax the shoulders away from the ears, chin in line with the floor. Belly button in, nice deep breaths, and close the eyes. Coming to lie flat on the floor for Shavasana. Tuck the shoulders underneath the back so they're nice and flat. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. And bring all your attention to the left foot. Wherever your mind goes, the blood and the prana will follow. Your attention is your greatest asset in your life. So bring all the attention into the foot. Allow the foot to relax. Tension there. The left knee becoming heavy. The left thigh loose, heavy, like water. Bring all your attention now to the right foot. Allow the foot to become heavy. And the right ankle, calf and shin all your attention there. Allow them to become heavy and soft. The right knee, upper leg, loose, heavy, like water. Bring all the attention now to the pelvis. Notice the contact between the pelvis and the tailbone, the sacrum and the floor. The low back. The internal organs. Mid back, the rib cage, the heart, the lungs, loose, heavy, the upper back, tops of the lungs and collarbones. Bring all your attention now to the thumb of the left hand. Allow the thumb to relax. The 
left index finger. Middle finger. Ring finger. And little finger. Soft. Relaxed. Relax the palm of the left hand. Palm or the back of the left hand and the palm. Left wrist and forearm. Elbow, upper arm and shoulder. Bring your attention now to the thumb of the right hand. Allow it to relax. Relax the index finger. Middle finger. Ring finger. And the little finger, loose, heavy. Relax the palm and the back of the right hand. Wrist and forearm. Elbow upper arm and shoulder, relax, and relax the neck, front of the neck, back of the neck, ears and scalp, attention to the forehead and the space between the eyebrows. Relaxing the eyelids. The muscles behind the eyes. Relaxing the cheeks the jaw and the tongue. Tire body now, loose, relaxed, still. Gentle movement to the fingers and the toes. Be stretching the body if you'd like. And coming onto one side of the body or the other and rest, keeping the eyes closed. And keeping the eyes closed still. Lifting up, 
coming to seated. Bringing the hands to the heart. All the attention to the space between the eyebrows. Finishing with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Shanti means peace. Om Shanti 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 Namaste. Thank you for sharing the practice.